questions that we all must um <clears throat> must answer is the fact that is this um a revelation to me or is it um a head knowledge right um whereby you just know these things and you are uh, you're good with the fact that oh i know better now you know all of that and that's it you know it's really not you know being worked on like it should you know how much of this truth are we really working in now how much of it are we um, laying demands on yeah how much of it are we practicing all right because we just don't want to finish a book and then we, we we're good we, we sound high and, and we're excited you know but the the fruits of it it's that's where the that's where the benefit of any book is the fruits of it and i must tell you like you all have said which is the truth andrew Mark made this very easy for us to to um to swallow in that sense right and it's so good to know that some of the things that god taught him he's able to also teach others like he he had to do from this book and, and every other book and um, videos and all that, that he has, you know, but you and I, we need to get to this point where we can ask ourselves the truth that I am hearing from this book. How much am I using it? How much am I opening my heart to it and allowing a daily walk, right? A daily walk with this revelation, a daily walk with the understanding it might not come one time, right? It might not come, you know, but when it comes, am I practicing? Bible says it's the doer that is blessed, not the hearer only. Uh, many people hear, many people read. The question is how many are doing? All right, so it's the doer here that you and I want to keep looking at. Another thing you want to look at is you don't want this truth to slip away, right? Because sometimes we... Uh, it's like you treat a topic and then we're done treating that topic and then we, you know, we go into another topic and then we keep moving. By the time you want to revisit the first two topics or something, because now you're now on the tenth topic, you might, likely might have forgotten one or two things or even a lot of it, you know. But if I am working it, if I am using these things, I would not be forgetting because it's now a, a, a daily part of my life, if you understand what I'm talking about. It's a daily part of me, so I'm not going to forget. But in case, let's read, let's read the scripture to that. Father, we thank you. Yeah, it's important that we do not forget. We don't want to forget, but it's important that we do not forget. You don't want it to get away. You don't want it. You don't want the enemy to steal from you that that is valuable to you. All right. So these things are important. It's important. Hallelujah. It's important. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hebrews chapter, chapter 2. I'm going to read verse 1 there. All right. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. It says, uh, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, all right? I would say to the things we are reading and to the things that we are being taught, all right, in the different services. You want to give earnest, all right, heed to those things. Um, less it drifts away. You don't want it to go. You don't want it to go. So this is, this is the Bible saying that there is possibility for those things to go out to be taken away, all right, to be forget to be for forgotten, to drift away. All right, that's what the word of God is saying, that it is possible for this to happen, but you, you need to guard all of that so that this doesn't happen. All right, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right. Now, from what we have been reading and all, it's um, obvious that uh, our spirit is identical with the spirit of Jesus. Um, and that means that nothing can con contaminate that. 
nothing can affect that, nothing can, you know, all of that that we have established already. But the soul and the body is where the work is. And I must say something at this point. It's very easy to want to live by the five senses because they are things that you are seeing, right? Even sometimes when you release your faith, sometimes you want to go back and check how are we doing, right? You know, and the moment you start checking, all right, what happens is that you drift away from faith, all right, because in your in your own self, you tell yourself, I'm caring. All right, that's what I'm doing. I'm caring. I just want to see how it's going. But that's how, not how faith works. Faith is not for you to keep monitoring if it's working or it's not working. The moment you start checking and start, you know, trying to, you know, all of that, doubt is already at the door. When you speak a word, what you want to do is you want to believe that it's ha it has happened. When you believe something has happened, you don't go back to check again. You don't go back to check. You just know it has happened. There's no need to monitor it. It stays alive. It stays working. Right. So many times it's easy to want to stay with the things that you and I are saying. All right. The things that we hear, the things that, I mean, someone said something. Oh, yeah, it's possible. You know, we're reasoning things. It's easy to want to, you're looking at something. Oh, it's so real. My God, I can see it. You know, all of those things tell us something. So it's easy to just want to settle there and live there because they look real. But I would like to say tonight that the life of the spirit that you and I have is as real and even more than the physical. We got to believe it. You and I have got to believe it, that that life is as real or even more real than what you and I see with our eyes. More real, more real. Many, many victories are won in the spirit before you can see it in the physical many 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 victories you get from there first so that that means there's a there's a, there's a place like that there's a place in the spirit there's a place in the spirit that our minds and our bodies have got to start you know renewing you know to enjoy what is in there all right it has to enjoy what is in there but all of this needs you and i to cooperate hallelujah we, you and i need to cooperate you and i need to keep looking at the word and cooperating with what the word has said all right and bypassing what our senses are saying all right and for many people you know, they see themselves because, like I said, some of these things are real, right? I mean, I can see it. I can touch it. I can that. I can this. All right? So for a lot of people, you see people drift away from the life of the spirit or from life of faith, and they get into compromising, all right, the word, because of what they see, touch, you know, here, all of th those things, they have allowed it to gain ascendancy. Like they have allowed it to be as real or more real. Let me use the word more real than the spiritual than the spiritual life. So at that point, we want to look at um, romance, which you and I have seen a couple of times. But it's just wise to look at it again. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Romans chapter 12, you want to go there with me and then we look at it together. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right, I'm going to read two translations just so that you can see some things there. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All right. Okay, let's start with, we could do one. So, yeah, yeah, we could do one. We could do one. We could do one. Let me start. No, we could do two. Let's go to Amplified. Amplified says, and do not be conformed to this world. It says, don't be conformed. Don't conform to this world any longer. All right? Don't conform at all to its values. Don't conform at all to its custom. Don't conform. That's what he's saying there. 
It says, it says, but the only way to go is to be transformed. All right. And I like, I like it in ampl amplified. It says, and be progressively changed. Are you saying that? It says, and be progressively changed as you mature spiritually by renewing off your mind, focusing on godly values. That's how we're going to renew our minds. Godly values, godly values, godly ethics, godly attitudes. We are renewing our minds. We're renewing us so that you and I may prove for ourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in the plan and the purpose of God. Listen, I, I like to say this, the whole essence of all of these things that we're doing, getting on the word, getting, you know, getting stronger in the, um, um, working on our belief system, ensuring our faith is working and all that, the whole essence of all of this is so that one, we can walk in the will of God. That is knowing God's word, the knowledge of God. You're walking in that will because you know, you know the knowledge, you know, you know, the, you know his word. Another reason is so that we can become spiritually mature. Yeah. People, there are, there, are, there, are, there are people that have received the Lord Jesus Christ for a number of years, and there is no renewal. They are born again, all right, but their but their attitudes, um, spoken words, conduct still does not really look like who they should be. All right, and we see this all around us all the time. This happens all the time all around us. Does it mean they don't have Christ in them? They do. But the effort here is that you have to commit to the renewal. You and I have got to commit to a renewal. One of the things that um, you and I know now is that we would renew our, our, our minds or our soul till we go to meet with Jesus. You and I will until you leave this earth. So you can't say, oh, I renewed my mind last week. I'm not renewing it anymore. No, it's a consistent work. You've got to keep renewing your mind because the enemy will suggest things to you. We want you to think in a particular way. We want you to say some things. We, all of those things will come to you. Some pictures will come into your mind. You know, all of those, you need to say no to something. You need to say, no, that's not my thought. You, you need to take authority over things and then you tell yourself, no, that's not how I'm supposed to think. I'm not thinking that. I'm not thinking that. Because thoughts will come. They will play in your direction. But you have got to say, no, I'm not thinking that way. I'm not talking that way. I'm not responding that way. I'm not allowing that. It all comes from in here. In here, someone talks to you in a way, you're wondering, why didn't the person talk to me that way? And then the next thing you want to do is you want to give back to the person how the person spoke to you, but you need to ask yourself, of what benefits would that be? I mean, that's the truth. That's one of the ways to renew your mind. Of what benefit would that do to me? No, I'm, I'm not going to be. I'm not, I'm not going to go that route. What have you done? You have renewed your mind. You've renewed your mind. I'm not going that route. I'm not going that route. It doesn't matter how the person responded or said what the person said. I'm going to say what I have to say the way I ought to say it. I will still be nice. I will still be as kind as I should be. This is renewal. It's going to be an everyday walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. An everyday walk. You wake up, you just begin to feel bad. You don't know why you're feeling bad. You're just feeling, oh, horrible. You're, you need to tell yourself, wake up, baby. You have got to be strong today. <laughs> be strong today. There is no down day for you. No, no, no. Because you don't even know the reason why you're feeling the way you're feeling. You just woke up and you're, oh, I just feel, I just feel. Whatever the feeling, speak to your body. It's part of renewing. Yeah. Like, no, nope, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that. You know, and then maybe there's a news on the outside that gets to you and you're like, oh, my God, oh, I didn't expect that. Fine. You didn't expect it. It has come, but you could have, you could still speak a word. S still speak a word. Don't give up on the fact that that's 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 going to be the end of what you're going to get. No, you are still going to speak a word. 
just to get a speaker word. Like, oh no, I, I, well, if that's what has happened, well, I, I believe in the name of Jesus. So you're changing something. You're not accepting what the world is bringing to you. You're not conforming. That's what I'm trying to let you see. There are different ways to conform. All right? So you, you need to tell yourself, I refuse to conform to this thing. I refuse to agree with it. I, 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 am I making sense to you at all? I refuse to agree with you. I'm not going to take this. If it's coming as a no and you want a yes, you're not agreeing with a no. So what are you doing? You're not conforming to it. You're not. All right. I wrote something that I said, conforming is you agreeing by saying and doing what is against God's word. You're saying it and you're doing it. It shows that you're conforming to, to, to the world system. You're conforming to what is available out there. All right. Someone does this to you. You want to do this back. That's not God's system. Someone said this to you, you want to, you know, that's not God's system. So we, we need to keep looking at that word conforming. How am I, you know, guarding my heart sincerely? All right. Just so that I don't, someone speaks to you in a, in a funny way and, you're, and you wonder, oh, I, I, why did he say, why did that, why was, why is that person uh, very disrespectful? Okay, no worries. Do your part, walk away. Do your part, walk away. And don't allow that Keep, you know, you know, don't don't think it again and again and again and again and again. Oh, why? Why did the person say this? Oh, I should have said that before. You know, the enemy starts giving suggestions. Maybe you were too slow. Maybe you, you just tell, no, no, I, I'm not. Let's not entertain that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. One of the things I have found out about Jesus is that. He loved people. And that's why Bible says in John 3, 16, that he came because of these people. So if Jesus came because of people, that means your attitude, your behavior, my attitude, my behavior, my thinking towards people, how I treat people, all of that must be as holy as possible. The moment you always have issues with people, you're always feeling like uh, you're always offended at people, you're always, always, all of those things are happening. There is a lot of renewal that needs to go in right there. You're easily offended, you're easily angered, you're easy, all of those, you need to renew your mind. Something is not working accordingly there. Something is not working accordingly and you're not being spiritual. You're not being who you ought to be. You're allowing yourself conform. You're allowing yourself conform. These things will happen. Like I said, it's an everyday dealings. You can't escape this one, but your response is what matters here. Your behavior is what matters here. The way you treat the situations around you is what matters here. And that you'll be able to differentiate. I'm not conforming. I refuse to conform. I'm not allowing. I refuse to allow all of those things. You begin to you begin to see yourself walk in the reality of those things. You see yourself overcome them. Oh, this person didn't say hi to me. I'm not going to say hi to them. That's beneath you. Come on, that's beneath you. There are some things that should should no longer bother us now. Why? Like I said, two major reasons: the will of God. You knowing the will of God and you being spiritually matured, it would eventually begin to cut things off your life. You won't bother about some things anymore. You're too spiritually matured for some things now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Responding to the systems of the world, of the world and its carnality. That's what conforming is. You're conforming every time you respond. The world says this, you do this. The world says we're going this direction, you follow. The world, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? You're conforming. You're allowing the influence of the world, of the world. You're not allowing the word of God to change what, what is being said. Because remember that you are in a you are in a world, a, a world system that is full of carnality. That's the kind of world that we live now in. But you and I are here, all right, not to participate 
but to become an example. And that's the reason why we're learning what we're learning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to also say that many times when you are conforming, it all is also it just, it just shows that you're immature. You're allowing immaturity. All right. You're allowing a low life, a low life. All right. You're considering a low life. You are having value for low life. And that is immaturity. That is not God's standard for you. It's not. It's not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at TPT. I, I want you to look at how he says it in TPT. Look at how he says it in TPT. TPT, um, Romans 12, verse 2. It says, stop imitating the ideas and opinions of the culture around you. Don't imitate it. Don't encourage it. Don't value it. Don't allow it. All right. It says, but be inwardly transformed. Are you seeing that? Be inwardly transformed. Be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. Are you seeing that? All right. Of how you think. It would affect our thinking. It would affect our mindsets, all right? We're being renewed that way. We're being, we're being better that way, all right? Because we're being affected, our mindset. But I like the fact that he brought out the word think, all right? Your thinking will be affected. And that's the reason why some things will no longer matter because you're looking at it and you're like, no, no, no. I'm not giving that attention. I'm not allowing that to control my uh, my emotions. I'm not allowing that to uh, to help me to make a decision on that route. I'm not allowing that to make me feel. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because you're working on your thinking. You're working on your thinking. You're working on your thinking. Sometimes when you, I, I don't know if this has happened to you or if this ha if this happens to you. Sometimes you get a text message and the next the text message sounds so harsh. But the truth of the matter is that the person that sent the text message didn't intend to be harsh. Didn't intend to be uh, to 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 make you feel, you know. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say because sometimes you, the the words chosen to, you know, to say whatever is being said is not well communicated the way. So in your ears, the way you re you're reading it, 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 you're already feeling up uh, an anger, you know, on your inside. Like, oh, why would a person send this this kind of text? But if you check with a person, you just find out, I think it's better to call you than to text you. <laughs> but you, do you know what happens? Because we don't get a clarifier, we're already angry. You're already, you know, you're, because the anger comes from a response. It's a response. You're responding to something you're not even sure about, but something inside of you is already, you know, judgmental about it. These are everyday life for you and I. Everyday life. So you're telling yourself, oh, no, I, I shouldn't get angry on that. I'll just clarify or better still for, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. The person didn't intend it. And sometimes you need to learn to um, overlook. Overlook. You don't have to always respond. Sometimes you want to overlook because the enemy wants you to respond. That way you'll be you'll be conforming to something you don't really need to come. You, you don't have a business with. All right. Every time you and I renew our minds, we're changing our attitudes as well. Your attitudes will be changed. You're changing. You're changing. It says, it says here, uh, a, a, a reformation of how you think. All right. So it's affecting the way we think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. It will help us. It would help us. It would help us. Because we're renewing our mind. As we renew our mind, our mindset also is being affected. Our attitudes being affected. When your attitude is affected, the words you speak will be will be carefully chosen. And even if it's not, you'll be so apologetic, very tender in heart. Because you're renewed in mind. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. These things are very important to you and I because it, because it has a lot to do with our maturity in the things of the kingdom. A lot to do with our maturity. A lot to do with how we are um, we're becoming examples for the master, right? Um, yeah, on a, on, a, on a daily basis. So these things will come. They will come. Uh, for some of us, it's going to be like a test. But you're telling yourself, I refuse to conform. I refuse to conform. I refuse to conform. I'm going to let it go. Something happens, you, you're not okay about it, you know, and then you, you want to go south with your with your with your character or something. No, it doesn't worry. So what do you do? You let it go, or you address it sincerely, all right, with all politeness, because your mind is being renewed. Many times you don't want you, you don't want to, you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to think about someone, and all you're doing is you're thinking what the person did, the way you have seen it, but you're not giving the opportunity to the person to defend themselves. Here we need to, we need to, we, we're confirming. That's what it means. You're confirming already. You are allowed, this is the world system. This is what, how the world lives. This is how the world behave. And that's not us. That's not us. This, this is not us. We must give opportunity to people and so for 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 some for for some reason you just want to let go of things like oh don't bother about it don't bother about it oh i didn't see it i try to i try not to see a lot of things deliberately i try not to see a lot of things it's good it, it keeps you healthy and it keeps you living longer as well you just want, yeah you don't want to see it you don't want to see it sometimes you don't want to hear it you know because some things could get into your heart and then you have a lot of struggle. Rather than have that struggle, please renew your mind off those things. Renew your mind off those things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All right. So I like the way he says it here. It affects how you think. So the question you and I want to ask is, how are we supposed to think? What are we supposed to look out to keep thinking the way you and I are to think, all right? I, I, we looked at this um, scripture um, <clears throat> um, on Sunday. We're just going to look at it again. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 8, verse 3, yeah. Chapter 3, verse 18. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right? 3 verse 18. It says here, it says, but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror, all right, the glory of the Lord. It says what? We're being transformed into the same image that we're looking at. The same image. We're being transformed. We're looking, all right, into that mirror and we're being transformed into the same image, the same image, the same image of the word of God, the same image, the word of God we're looking at, we're becoming it. The word of God you and I are looking at, we're becoming it. We're becoming it. We're be Why? Because we're beholding. We're beholding. We're looking. We're looking. All right. It says, it says into the same image from glory to glory. All right, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. I want to say something to you at this point. All right, it says here, it says, being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Uh, let me look at Amplified. Amplified says it in a in a more um, yeah, because what, what this is also saying to you and I is that as you're looking, you must make progress. All right. You can't just look at God's word, take your eyes off it. All right. And then walk away. You've got to keep making progress, make progress with what you're learning, make progress with how you're living, make progress with what you're seeing, correct your life with the things that you think used to be. And then you're seeing it from the word. Don't argue with God's word. What do you do? You take it the way it is. You take God's word the way it is. You take it. You have faith that this is what the word of God says. So it's going to settle in my heart. If it hasn't settled, now keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking at it until you become what you are saying. Until you allow the world become what you're saying. Until then. Until then. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I think, is it um, classic I want to look at now? 
Okay, let's look at um, Amplified. Amplified says, and we all with unveiled face, continually seen as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are progressively. Mm, you're making progress. Progressively being transformed into the same image, into that same image, into his image, all right? I like the way he says it here. Look at that. It says, from one degree of glory to even more glory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back a, a bit from there. It says, progressively, meaning take baby steps if you have to, but just make progress. Move from where you used to be. Learn something from the word. That look at the word. Let it change you. Let it change you. Now, when you look at a baby, I, I got one, right? When you look at a baby, the baby's life is such that, in fact, all of our lives is such that as you and I are growing, or as now that we, you and I were born, right, we had to grow. You know, and, and I, I see that a lot of us have an advancing age. Some of us are coming behind. And some of them, some, of, some other people are coming behind us. And then we have other kids and all of that. Everybody is expected to grow. If you find a child that was born and is not changing in, um, in, in the physique, they're not changing in their development. They're not, you, all of, you will have questions. Why are, they not why are they not growing? This person has a stunted growth. What's going on? You know, this person doesn't look good. You know, you would, you would have, you would, you question the growth. Because the expectation of a natural man is that when you are born, you must grow. Yeah, that's the expectation of a natural man. Now, we will bring that into the word of God as well. All right. The same thing with the word of God. When you are born, you must desire to grow. Bible says here in um, 1 Peter, you want to go there quickly? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All right. It says that you should desire the sincere milk of the word, thereby so that you would grow. There is growth for us. 1 Peter, oh, I didn't give you 1 Peter 2, 2. Let's look at it together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. It says, like newborn babies. Uh-huh. All right, you should long for the pure milk of the word. All right, the spiritual man, the spiritual woman grows on the word of God. Everyone born again. All right, after salvation, the next thing for a believer is to grow. You've got to grow. You have, re you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. The next thing is to know how to live the life. You are growing. All right. So it says here, like newborn babies. All right. You should long for the pure milk of the world so that by it you may be nurtured and grow in respect to salvation, its ultimate fulfillment. You must grow. You must, you and I must grow. There must be changes. All right. No one, no, no baby remains like, a, like that forever. It shows that there's something wrong with that growth. So the believer must want to grow. You must desire to grow, desire to read your Bible, desire to pray, desire to pray in tongues, desire to spend time with the Father. Desire That desire must be there. Desire to be in the gathering of believers, desire to hear God's word, desire to play a message and let it play over and over and over again. This, desire these things and grow. That's how we grow. Pick a scripture. Let it run in your heart. Let it go over and over and over and over, over and over. First Corinthians um, um, 6, 17 that we all did, I believe, in our different group. You know, you want to you want that to, you know, to, to sit on your inside. He that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with the Father. It's one spirit with the Father. What are you doing? You are allowing that word, all right, to renew your mind and you're letting that word settle in your, in your heart. You're allowing it settle. You're allowing it settle. 
So you're looking at, at yourself, you know, through that mirror and you're seeing, oh, I am joined with the Father. I and the Father are one. He that is joined to the Father is one with him. It's one with him. I'm joined with the Father. What are you looking? You're looking at the mirror. You're looking at the mirror. If you think about the scripture with your head, you might not go far in your thinking. Because you begin to look at the Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. How come we are one? How, how, how? Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go to the mental arena. No, don't go there. Don't go there. Stay in the place of faith. Don't question what the scripture has said. What the word has said is who you are. That's what, the, what I said. The word has said who you are. Stay with who you are. Who you are is you and the father are one. Who you are is you're joined with the father and you have become one, one spirit with him. One spirit with him. Don't go to the mental arena. How, is, how can this be? Oh, is it possible? God Almighty? How will he, will he come? Don't question that. That is not for you and I to figure out. The word says it, all right? You and I check on it. We look at it. We believe it. We're looking into that mirror. And then we're telling ourselves, that's what the word says. And so it is in my life. That's what the word says. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. And that's me. That's me. I'm joined with the Father. I'm joined with the Father. I'm joined with the Father. Greater is God on my inside than everything all around me. Every negative thing are all around me. Greater is God. Greater is God. The greater one is in me. Is in me now. Is in me now. Is in me now. Is making things work together for my good. Is in me now. Is in me now. Is in me now. Is correcting things. He's rearranging things. Is making me well. Is in me now. The greater one is in you. Don't figure it with your head. No, don't figure it. How can the greater one be in me? How, how, where will he stay? Oh, I'm, I'm, and I'm just a little one. Don't talk like that. The greater one makes you big. Also, you are big. You are big. The enemy can. The enemy. Listen. The moment, you, the moment you gave your life to Christ, all right. You and the enemy do not have a relationship. One, two. You are bigger than the enemy. The enemy is under your feet. Why? Jesus defeated that man for us. So you and I are over it. We're over. All right? So if there's no place. We're seated together in the heavenly places. And every time we, we're looking down, we come down from where we are. We come down from where we are. This is where we are. This is where we are. We don't have a business looking down. We don't have a business with the enemy. We don't have a business settling anything with him. He's a defeated foe. You need to keep telling yourself that. You are defeated. I am a child of God. I am in charge here. I am in charge here. I am in charge here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go, go ahead. Uh, just, I want you to say it, um, the first Corinthians 6, 17. Uh, I want you to say it again to yourself. He that is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. It's one spirit. With him. Say that to yourself. Again. Just, let, just say that again and again. I'm joined with the Lord. I'm one spirit with him. I'm one spirit with the Father. Yes, I am one spirit with the Father. I and the Father are one. Let that word sink in on your inside. Just keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. I and the Father are one. We are one. Because he that is joined with the Lord is one spirit. One spirit. We have fellowship. One with another. Hallelujah. Fellowship. One with another. Fellowship. One with another. Fellowship. One with another. I am joined with the Lord. Hallelujah. I am joined with the Lord. I am one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. <laughs> I'm one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. If I'm one spirit with the Father, then wisdom flows through me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Wisdom flows through me. Answers come through me. Why? I'm joined with the Father. I'm joined with the Father. I'm joined with the Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm joined with him. Hallelujah. I'm joined with the Father. I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. He that is joined with the Father is one spirit. I'm one spirit with my Father. I am one spirit with my Father. One spirit. One spirit with the Father. One, hallelujah, hallelujah. One, hallelujah, ha, 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 ha. One, glory to God. One, hallelujah. 
Ha ha ha. One, one, hallelujah. One, ha sheketa la bosa. One with the Father. One with the Father. One with the Father. Oh, my seketa. Thank you, Father. I am one with the Father. I and the Father are one. We're one. We're one. We're one. One spirit with the Father. I'm one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. I am one spirit with the Father. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Another translation says, but the one who is united, hallelujah, who is united to the Lord is one spirit with him. I'm united with the Father. I am united with the Father. I am united. I am united. Hallelujah. I am united. Don't stop saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's another one says, but he who is joined, who joins himself to the Lord becomes spiritually one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says we're spiritually one, spiritually one with God, spiritually one with God. I am spiritually one with the father. That's who I am. What am I doing? I'm looking into the mirror of God's word. I'm looking into that mirror. I'm looking into that mirror. When you look at that mirror, you, you, you keep adjusting. You keep adjusting yourself. You keep adjusting yourself. You begin to trust what you see. Trust what you're saying. Trust what you're saying. God's word is perfectly reflected. All right? Through, through, through the spirit, it's perfectly reflected to you. It helps you see who you are. Who you are. Who you are. This is who you are. This is who you are. I'm joined with the Father. I'm joined with the Father. I am joined with the Father. Oh, glory to God. Let me see if I can find any other one for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. However, the person who unites himself with the Lord becomes one spirit, all right, with him, one spirit with him, all right? Unites himself. Hallelujah. 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 He unites himself. He unites himself. He joins himself. Oh, I'm joined with the Father. I'm joined with the Father. I'm united with the Father. I am, I am, I am. TPT says it in a different way. It says, but the one who joins himself to the Lord, mingle, hallelujah, we're mingling, we're, we're mingled, we're mingled, we're mingled into one spirit with him, hallelujah. Mingled, mingled, mingled. When you when you, when you you put a, a drink in a cup and then you put another in, another in another cup and you put the drink together, you cannot separate it, hallelujah. You cannot separate it. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. That's the same way we are with the Father. Glory to God. That's the same way we are with the Father. That's the same way we are with the Father. We're joined with him. We're joined to him. We're joined. We're joined. We're joined with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things will flow easily from the Father to your spirit. It will flow easily, easily, easily. You would know what to do. You will know how to do what to do. You begin to find things easily, all right? And, 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 and if you give so much attention, you find yourself working in word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Why? You're joined with the Father. You're joined with the Father. You begin to see things ahead of, uh, ahead of time. Why? You're joined with the Father. You're joined with the Father. Your Father shows you things. Hallelujah. 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 He shows you things. He gives you answers. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your soul can be transformed now to the degree you renew your mind. All right? Your soul can only be transformed now to the degree that you renew your mind. If we don't renew our minds, we will not be able to think these thoughts successfully and begin to get the kind of fruits that are, that are in it. All right. There are fruits from looking into that mirror. You're looking, you're looking, you're looking. God's word perfectly reflects you. You're looking, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. This is who you are in your spirit. This is who you are in your spirit. This is who you are. And you're trusting on what you're saying. When you look at a natural mirror, all right, um, what happens is like, you know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you want to start adjusting. Oh, okay. Oh, Oh, this isn't looking good. Oh, my hair is flying away. You know, all of those things. You begin to adjust. The same way when you look at God's word, you want to adjust your behavior. You want to adjust 
your mindset. You want to adjust what you're doing. You want to adjust how you're talking. You want to adjust. Those things begin to work on, on us too. It's the same way. It's the same way. You adjust. You adjust. You hear a word and, and it talks about something that concerns you. You adjust. Oh, you adjust. Oh, okay. 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 I see it better now. Okay. Oh, oh, I didn't know I was wrong. Oh, okay. 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 You are adjusting. Why? You're looking at the mirror. You're looking at the mirror. You're looking at the mirror. Sometimes, naturally speaking, you look at yourself and you tell yourself, I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. But you want to ask yourself again, what, the, what, the, what does the word say? I feel weak right now. But what does the word say? Don't end with I'm weak. End with what the word says. End with what the word says. Yeah, I, I, I feel, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't feel strength on my inside. Okay, we understand that. But the truth, you don't end on that. You say, I can do all things through who strengthens me. You've got to say something that helps you not settle for how you are experiencing things. Listen, your experience and my experience will never, never change what the word of God has said. What the word of God has said is is, per is permanent, is final. You and I are going to renew our mind to be able to enjoy what, a God, what, what God's word says concerning us. That's how we're going to live this life. You're going to renew your mind to enjoy it. You're going to renew your mind to enjoy it. You need to look at yourself and say, I'm the blessed. I'm not the cost. I'm the blessed. I'm the blessed. I'm the rich. I'm not the poor. Bible says uh, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and hadeth no sorrow. You need to say those things. Don't don't settle for uh, the way this thing is going. It looks like ah, there's a cost. So no, 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 don't settle for it. Even if you're noticing it, you're seeing it. Don't settle for what you're seeing. Don't forget, renewal so that you don't conform. Renewal so you don't conform. Every time you settle for, I am weak, I feel weak, and that is it. You have confirmed. Every time you settle for, oh, this situation keeps moving. I don't understand what's going on. I'm confused. You're confirming. Every time you, you look at yourself and you say, oh, man, I'm just a mere man. I'm, I, just, I, I don't think I have, I have the capacity for this and all of that. You're confirming. You're confirming. You're confirming to this world. You're looking at your bank account and you're like, man, this place is looking empty. Come on. You confirming. You confirming. There was something Larry said the other day, and I, uh, some people were, you know, they, I, I don't know if you really answered when he was talking about the fact that um, if you need a shoe and then you get the money, what would you prefer? And then he said, make sure you're not wanting both because what you want is what you want. So it's that the money comes to you or the shoes come to you. Something comes. But the point here is that you're, you're, you're sitting down there and you're telling yourself, this is my need. Listen, our God provides every need. It doesn't need, you, listen, you don't need to be rich uh, with the substance of uh, cash to be able to enjoy the wealth of this world. I found out. Yeah, I found out. You, it's not until you have the cash. There are so many things that will come your way through favor. And you're like, whoa, I should, if, I, if I had bought that, I'm going to be spending more. But this person saved me money by, you know, giving it to me. He says, God says so. So I receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every need doesn't need to be you going to the store to pick anything. Our God supplies. Hallelujah. Our God supplies. This is a mindset you and I have got to get. You don't settle for, I don't have, I don't have, I don't. We know you don't have. What is your, what is your, what's the word you're releasing? What word are you releasing? My God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Not according to your bank account, according to your pocket, according to your checkbook. No, it's not saying that. It says according to his riches in glory. Wherever that thing that you need needs to come in from, if it has to get into Ontario to get to you, it's going to get in here. Because you're not settling for, I don't have. You said you don't have. We know we do. you don't have. But you're not settling there. You now put, put the, the power of God's word saying, I receive the supplies. Hallelujah. I receive the supplies. It's coming my way. Hallelujah. The same way with our health. The same way with relationship. We, do you understand what I'm saying? We use God's word to bring all of these things together. Hallelujah. I think it's time to go. I see. All right. So this is important, right? This is important. You and I will keep 
renewing our mind. We need to keep renewing our mind. Renewing our mind with the word of God. Renew your mind. With, when situation comes your way, think, think about the word again. The word again. The word again. What does the word say? What does the word say? What are you doing? You're renewing. You're, you're reshaping. You're adjusting. You're making sure. You're, you know, your, your attitude, all of that is changing. It's changing. All right. You want to look at the last scripture I have for you, Philippians 1? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And what does that say in verse 6? Hallelujah. You've read this before. It says, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective. All right. Some says effectual. All right. You know, and this is saying to you that you've got to acknowledge, acknowledge those things that are inside of you. Acknowledge, acknowledge it, acknowledge that you are the son of God. Acknowledge that you are the blessed of God. Acknowledge that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Just acknowledge the things that you are already have on the inside of you. Acknowledge this life that you're living. Acknowledge. Give him praise for it. Thank him. Can we go ahead and just thank him right now? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We receive your word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We're being changed from glory to glory. We're, we're, we're being adjusted from glory to glory. We keep moving from glory to glory. We stand perfect and complete in all that God has called us to enjoy from glory to glory. Hallelujah. We stand sure. We stand perfect. We grow. Hallelujah. You and I grow. We change. Hallelujah. We become better and better. We are matured better than we were yesterday. Matured better than we were last week. Matured better than we were last month. Matured better than we were last year. We are maturing. We are getting better and better. Better and better. Hallelujah. Better than better. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for tonight's word. We thank you, Father, because we are hearers and doers of your word and not just hearers alone. We're not going to deceive ourselves. Why? Because we know we have to grow spiritually. We know, we know we have to know your word to keep, to keep going from glory to glory. So, Father, tonight, strength, strength for everyone listening now and will listen later. Strength, strength. Strength to see the word of God correct things in our lives. And we take note of these things. Oh, yes. Thank you, Father. Strength to cooperate with the anointing of your word. To cooperate with the voice of the spirit of God on our inside. Strength to do exactly what you're saying to us. And to yield to your word. To yield to your voice. In the name of Jesus. That we become better. That we keep transforming. That we keep renewing our mind. We keep getting better and better. Strengthened and strengthened with this word. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.